The KwaZulu-Natal Education Department will table its budget vote for its financial year later on this morning. This is amid the province's preparations for the reopening of schools on this coming Monday, the 8th of June. The department was dealt a severe blow this week after large quantities of personal protective equipment that was meant for learners was stolen en route to circuit offices and uh, schools in Umlazi, Pinetown and Zululand. To discuss this further, we're joined now by Kwazim Shengu, who is the MEC for Education in the KwaZulu-Natal province. MEC, thanks for joining us. Good to have you on the program. Good morning and good morning to the viewers. We last heard that you'd instructed the head of department to investigate the matter. What have you managed to establish in terms of, firstly, the quantity that was stolen and also the circumstances around the event? Well, what happened is that uh, I normally hold the evening meeting with all the district directors in the province just to, to check the, the work that they had performed on that particular day and the state of readiness per, per district. And uh, what what became clear is that the three district directors were complaining that uh, there were uh, there was shortage of PPEs in their district, whereas the report from the HOD, who had been in touch with the suppliers, uh, was confirming that uh, everything had been delivered in those uh, in those districts. Uh, Zululand, in particular, was saying there is about um, thirty nine thousand uh, masks uh, for 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 learners that uh, that were missing. And we were quite concerned because uh, the request from the three direct, uh, district directors was that uh, we needed to to replace uh, that which uh, cannot be accounted for. Uh, when, in our view, everything had been bought, we then decided that uh, this is this is quite worrying, uh, and we needed an investigation on this matter. Uh, the following day, I instructed the HOD to ensure that he appoint immediately a person who is going to investigate the circumstances around which uh, these uh, PPEs are missing. And um, yesterday, we started to receive some information, uh, particularly from the district of Zulu, and saying, uh, no, actually, there is a stock that was delivered. It was signed by, uh, for, by somebody else who did not uh, uh, declare it, but kept it in another, um, uh, in a, was kept in another uh, warehouse. And our position and attitude was that uh, those explanations must now go to the investigation, uh, because we were almost made to buy and incur more cost on the basis of something that is there in the district offices. As to why it is coming up now after we have announced the investigation, that must be explained in the, uh, within the investigation process. So that is where we are. The investigation uh, has started, and uh, we will obviously share with the public uh, the findings and the recommendations of that investigation. Charges been laid as yet? No charges have been uh, 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 with the police because the advice from the legal service was that uh, because the investigation is not uh, uh, anticipated to take long and uh, it's not like these uh, uh, were, were stolen probably in the on the road uh, en route to either a school or what or there was a hijacking of some sort but there's probably a problem of uh, a coordination and accounting uh, of, of of what happened within the system we need to wait for the uh, for the findings of the of the of the investigation which will then tell us what exactly happened and from there, we can take the matter forward. What you're saying is that there, there might be an issue on the counting side of things and that maybe these PPEs weren't as, as many as initially thought were stolen. Is that is that pretty much so what you're, you're saying? It, yeah, what, 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 I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, these PPEs were not stolen on the road. First, first and foremost, let me clarify that. So there was no car hijacked uh, with the PPEs. The problem is within the, the, the department officials who, who, who received these PPEs, and then they are now failing to account on what actually happened from district to circuit, from circuit to schools. So that is why we're saying it's an internal matter, which uh, this investigation will help us to find out what actually happened. Uh, even those PPEs that have since re resurfaced, the person who received them must be able to go to the investigator and account as to why we were almost made to, to incur uh, additional costs in the department uh, when something were actually uh, delivered, why such things were not declared to the district director so that uh, we, we don't get in, to swim in this, in, this, in this pool of confusion. So once that investigation is done, it will tell us exactly what happened as well as the recommendation whether we take internal uh, uh, processes uh, further or we report the matter to the police uh, for further uh, action or investigation, that will be revealed by the outcomes of this uh, investigation. That is why we have taken a posture to say 
let's 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 go to the police if need be with all the information as revealed by the investigation. This is very very worrying, especially if this is this is an internal uh, job as you're you're saying, and that. A, there are no, like, no charges that have been laid, that um, this is causing your department untold costs. Can you give us a number? How much has been lost due to this particular incident? Well, I, I don't have the, 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 the full uh, uh, cost as to what, how, how much uh, it has been lost. Uh, as I'm saying, that uh, the district director of Zululand, for example, was saying that about 39,000 masks uh, that, that were missing. and. Uh, uh, some of them, if not all, have since has since resurfaced because we they sent us a letter to say uh, they they want to 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 apologise and uh, confirm that that consignment was actually uh, delivered in 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 the in the in in the district offices. So now the HOD, the, SS, the CFO are busy collating the information on probably what may still be missing because if if those that are still missing are not resurfacing resurfacing anytime soon, we'll have to replace them because. Schools must open on Monday, and uh, whoever is responsible for for the missing of these PPEs obviously will have to be to be accountable and be and be uh, really held accountable for that. You know, MEC, I, I'm struggling to to come to terms with what you're what you're telling us right now because in your initial press release that went out after you'd heard about this, your immediate reaction was that schools are meant to be opening on Monday, and now. There is all this PPE that's been taken, and you must have been aware of, of some kind of cost, because inside the statement you said that the opening of schools now seemed to be an elusive goal. And that's to quote exactly what was written in the statement. So you must be aware of a cost, and this, this, this is a, it, it's a big situation that I feel is being downplayed on your behalf. Not at all. We have not, we have not downplayed it because uh, you will remember that uh, it's us who have volunteered this, this, this information to public. We got it from an internal uh, meeting, which uh, if we were to downplay it or we're not serious about it, we could have said, no, let's keep this matter under carpet and let's just uh, replace whatever is said to be missing. But it is us who went to public and it is us who, initi who initiated the investigation. It's not that there was a whistleblower or whatever or, or, or kind of, a, of an information that was volunteered to us. So the, 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 it, is, it may not, it's not true that uh, we, are, we are downplaying it. What I do not want to do is to, is to venture into, in, into speculation about the exact amount because that task, the task that the FDA, HOT and the CFO need to complete. I don't want to be quoted now as having to say this and then later on uh, other amounts uh, 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 appear as a result of that process that is done by the HOD. What I know is that these are the biggest districts uh, in, 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 in the province. And obviously, if, if the, the large amounts are missing of quantities uh, of, of, of the PPEs, they will, they will cost uh, really the department more, the money that we don't have, since uh, everything that we've actually procured has always been taken from the, the monies that we had to reprioritize from the, from the baseline of the department. So I would really not want to venture into, into uh, the speculation about the exact uh, figures that, uh, that, uh, that will cause the department uh, to replace whatever is missing. I, I, I quote you from an interview that you did with my colleague Sakina Kamwendo a bit earlier this week and she asked you the very same question. You answered that you would have the figure yesterday that you'd have more on the investigation and that charges would be laid by yesterday. That's yesterday, mm -hmm. this is today. None of that has been done. And in fact, a very worrying statement that you said a little bit earlier during one of your answers is you said, if need be, we will go to the police. MEC, a crime has been committed. PPE is missing. Schools may not open in your province on time. And we're going to get into the condition of some of the schools in KwaZulu-Natal in just a few moments. This is a crime. What are you waiting for? As I said, uh, Sakina, uh, no, sorry, as I, had, uh, as, I, as I said earlier on is that... Uh, I convened the legal services of the department to say assist us to to open the case uh, in in insofar as this matter is concerned. And their advice was they was to say, MEC, because the investigation is not going to take uh, long, uh, uh, let's allow the process of the investigation to reveal really the extent to which uh, uh, these things are missing, uh, so that we go to the police with uh, the the information that is necessary or that is actually been authenticated by the by the by the investigation, in, in independent investigation, as it were. Uh, I must say that uh, I've, I've also taken an issue with uh, the, the CFO and the HOT to say they should have, by yesterday, at least completed the, the task of, uh, 
of saying really what is actually missing uh, beyond with, with that which is now has uh, has resurfaced from uh, department i mean from the zululand district because uh, we i also want to know the exact figures uh, the exact numbers of these things that uh, that uh, that are missing but in so far as the, the the reporting the case to the police we are not ruling that one out uh, but i acted on the basis of the legal uh, opinion uh, that i was given by the by the department and uh, there was no way I, would, I could have said to them uh, continue with this even when you say let's allow the process so that we are not seen as as jumping uh, without uh, knowing actually the exact extent and the facts around this matter that of, of the PPEs that are missing. So it's not that uh, we are saying we are not going to, to engage the police on this matter. But when you open a case, uh, as per the legal services advice, is that uh, let's let's gather all the facts because these are if if the, if the matter was an issue of a track that has been hijacked, it would have been a different case. But now we are dealing with an internal matter. That is why you even know that most of the time, things get. Uh, referred to the police or the NPA after forensic investigation has been done, either internally or through uh, external investigators. That's when you then say to the police, indeed, this thing has been uh, discovered in such an extent and in such a manner, and we believe that uh, the police should now then take over. So that is the advice from that I got from the legal, uh, from legal services of the department. Okay, well, I, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that there, but the, the reality is, is that um, whether it was a, a truck hijacking or something that happened with inside your department, a crime is a crime and it has been committed and it should be investigated, one would say externally, because that, 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 that would help expedite this process, no doubt. And, uh, you yeah, know, we, we, yeah, it's all right, you want to comment finally? The investigator appointed is an external investigator. We are not doing an internal audit. We have appointed an, in, an external investigator, independent, and said you must give facts as cold as they are. So we're not doing some kind of an internal audit by officials within the department. Okay. We have appointed an internal external investigator. Okay, Let, let's quickly just leave that there. I want to get to one or two issues as well. You went on a, on, a, on a sightseeing mission to visit a couple of schools around different areas. I know that you went into Peter Maritzburg. You visited Nsika High School. You also went to, um, I think it was uh, Sanzuili as well as uh, Bongodunga in um, uh, Edenvale. And these schools, just to name a few, I think there, there, there were quite a few more that were added into this, are in a very bad state. And chances of them opening on Monday are very, very slim. They don't have water. They don't have toilets that are good for use. In fact, at one of the schools in Sika High, there was a fire that has damaged a part of the school. And this was a long time ago that's never, ever been repaired. What's going to happen to these schools and many others? I mean, there's been talk that there, there are probably at least 15 other schools in that, only in that area that won't be ready. Talk to us about readiness in the province and what we're going to do here. Well, insofar as the readiness, uh, the report that I got as of yesterday was that we were over 5,000 schools uh, that were declared ready by the department. Uh, you remember that we have 6,140 schools in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. And with regard to the specific school that uh, you have asked about uh, in Sega, uh, the school is, uh, will be ready. Uh, in fact, it is now ready because some of the things that were complained that they were complaining about, there were immediate interventions that we had made. Uh, actually, uh, the, the, there were three issues that that they had raised in that school. The problem first was around the 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 the, the issue of water, uh, and the tank has been uh, installed, and the water has been sent by the municipality. Uh, there was an issue of uh, ablution facilities. Uh, the, the, the the chemical mobile toilet has been sent to the school. There was an issue of uh, the outstanding PPEs, uh, the mask for learners, and that has actually been sent to the school. So in terms of the school, uh, the one that I visited uh, around Mpumudo district, those schools will, are now ready to, 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 to open. In so far as the building that, uh, was, that was set alight at Insiga, uh, at least the, the, the current classes uh, that, are, that are in existence will be able to, to accommodate the, the grade 12, uh, which will be coming back on Monday. So we're not necessarily uh, under, under a pressure in, in, in terms of the floor space and the social distancing in that particular school. So I, I, I've also instructed other senior officials to say, let's go around the province uh, to ensure that we go to these schools that have that are said not to be read, so that we are able to make timeless interventions, because some of, of the things really are not uh, are not difficult to 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 to, uh, to 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 put in place. There will be uh, schools, uh, particularly around Zululand and Umkanyagute, where we are still battling with uh, with water provisions. 
Uh, the minister has assisted us to say uh, they have made an agreement with uh, the, the, the minister responsible for SNTF, and SNTF will be coming in place to, to, to also assist us, particularly around the water provision in those two districts in particular. So we're working hard to make sure that indeed all our schools uh, are opening on Monday. What about the complaints that have been coming in from a lot of the unions and teachers? And I can see that you've also been trying to put out a few fires on this behalf in terms of the poor quality of the PPE that has been delivered to them. I can see that there are a lot of schools that have been speaking, uh, well, unions, I should say, that have been speaking out about the quality. Uh, Satu, Naptoza, Natu, uh, all of these were saying that some of the PPE, not all of it, but some of the PPE that has been delivered is of terrible quality and certainly not enough well let me first indicate that uh, we're now working uh, hand in glove together with the uh, with with the unions as well as the sgps uh, we are convening meetings uh, uh, every after a day to, to ensure that uh, we, we we bring each other on board we had our last meeting was yesterday and there were issues that they were raising for for our immediate uh, uh, intervention insofar as the allegations of uh, 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 the PPE that is substandard. The process is that uh, Department of Health, which is responsible for quality assuring the, the specification and standard of these PPEs, did a pre-audit uh, at the beginning of the process and now is entering into a process of doing the post-audit to check if indeed what has been delivered is, is exactly what was ordered in terms of the number, but also in terms of the, the specification which they had prescribed to the Department of Health. And that process is now underway. And we have made it clear that uh, where there are instances of delivery of, of, of PPEs that are of substandard, will not be paying as a department. In fact, there is no service provider that will be paid until we get a final report from the Department of Health. And we did that to ensure that we don't get into a situation where uh, 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 public monies are spent on something that is not compliant with the specification as given at, at the beginning of the process. Yeah. So let's let's just sort of start rounding this up. We talk of 5,000 schools in the province um, uh, that already 6,140 is the number of schools that are in KwaZulu-Natal, and 1,140 of these schools, as you mentioned, are not necessarily ready, and that includes schools that were vandalized, because I know within KwaZulu-Natal, you had about 400 schools that were vandalized, and this is a big issue. My concern is about these schools that are not going to open. Are you um, ready for the fact that some schools in your province are not going to open on Monday? Well, let me first indicate that insofar as the schools that are vandalized, uh, there were 10 schools which required mobile classrooms. Uh, those schools, uh, some of them were set alight, some of them were badly uh, vandalized, and some of them were, 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 were a victim of the, of the storm uh, uh, damage uh, that happened uh, 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 I mean, just before the lockdown. Now, those schools, 10 of them, have benefited through the provision of uh, mobile classrooms. And the report is that those mobile classrooms have been completed. So we, we, we don't have a problem with that. Then there are schools that were broken into uh, through the windows, uh, doors uh, broken in uh, that, that were vandalized. In those, as in those instances, principals were given authority to procure uh, necessary things to, to fix the windows, to fix the door, so that uh, learners can be able to find a school that is in better conditions. So it's not all schools that were broken into had to, to, to benefit from the program of, of mobile classrooms. And that process of repairing windows, of repairing doors, is continuing and is handled at, at a school level uh, through the additional monies that we have, that we have uh, given to schools, in addition of norms and standards that uh, we always give uh, uh, to schools. So in case there are schools that are not ready in the province of Kwasul Natal, because we, we have been clear that any school that is not ready will not, will not open, because we don't want to risk the lives and, and, and the lives of teachers as well as the educators. So where we see that there is a school that is not ready, we'll have to, to, to look into contingent plan as to what is it that we can do so that the learners of those schools are not disadvantaged. Part of the things that we are considering is that probably we need to send them to other schools, if uh, nearby schools, if possible, and if this floor space allows, so that they can also start benefiting from the, rec the academic recovery plan while they, we get space to, to complete the, 
the readiness of those schools. But those schools that are not ready will not be open. And the, the learners, as I'm saying, that uh, we are even in consultation with National to say these are the probably the, 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 the contingency plans that you can look that you can put in place. Should by the weekend we know that uh, there are schools that are not ready in the province of Kwazulu Natal. We've got to leave it there. Thanks for your time. Thanks for talking to us here on the, prog on the program about issues facing KwaZulu Natal and uh, PPEs disappearing, uh, the, steel, the stealing thereof, and other issues with regard to the opening of schools on Monday. Kwaizu Mshengu is the MEC for Education in KZN. All right, seven o'clock here on the.